The internet makes it easy for anyone to find information, images, videos, or music. And thanks to cell phone cameras and other digital tools, we're encouraged to create, consume, and share all those things. And that can pose a lot of challenges when it comes to copyright. Before the internet, it wouldn't enter your mind to just copy and paste someone else's material for your own use. Now, in a matter of seconds, you can copy an image or download a video and add it right into your work. So how do you know when you can reuse someone's work? Why can't you just download a song from your favorite artist and share it? Or copy a video from CNN and put it on your website? It's online, so obviously it's fair game, right? That's a key question that is repeated more and more these days. There's no single answer, but there are terms and licenses that can help provide guidance. For starters, all creators own the rights to their work, their intellectual property. It's their decision on what and how much to share. Some creators choose to apply copyright, giving them exclusive rights to the work. Others rely on a website's default license or elect to share their work through Creative Commons. License designations like attribution, share alike, or no derivatives tell you how a work can be used. And just as with print, citation is critical for online sources and even required by certain licenses. But understanding copyright is not just about these new licenses. There are also questions about how and where you are using material. Linking an image to your Pinterest is not the same as downloading that image and using it in a presentation or work you're getting paid to do. Some uses are specifically allowed for a classroom, but are not okay elsewhere. Even when allowed in a classroom, it is still important to consider the impact of your use. Is the material being transformed into something new? Is it being used for commentary or illustrative purposes? Does the use harm the creator? The answers will vary. When you come across a video or blog with thousands of likes and reshares, it is easy to think this implies consent to use freely. While that is often the case, we need to learn to verify that each time rather than assuming. One of the greatest challenges with having so many resources online is remembering that just because you found it doesn't make it yours. By being attentive to licenses, considerate of the creator's rights and our impact each time we use another's work, we can model positive digital citizenship for our students.